Like we started selling this product out of the trunk of our car. Don't be afraid to fail. Inventory management is about balance. Get the product out, that's number one. I've always preached sustainable growth. So we just started building community. Look at the data. Product development is everything. Yeah, we say we're a brick, click, and pop. But you have to love what you do. Thanks for having me. You can hear me, yeah? Yeah, you sound great. I was so nervous to do this. Like, I had to have my husband down here showing me how to use all the screens. So <laughs> hopefully when I share my screen for the presentation, we'll be good. But Scott, thank you and the entire team at Socialite for um, coordinating this webinar in what really amounted in a very short amount of time. Um, I'm so excited to hear about all the number of speakers that you have and the number of people that are attending. Um, I really hope that everyone today will walk away with like some nugget of knowledge, something creative, something new to implement into their business um, that can help them tomorrow. Um, and I look at this as like we're all in this together and every day I'm inspired by the many stories that we're hearing that are so unique and so different and you know we look at this and there's no playbook. No one's ever experienced anything quite like this but I think um, as we're all coming together we can learn and we can create something really meaningful and purposeful and, and magical. And, you know, I, I try to find the silver lining all, all of this. I mean, I think we all have a, a day where we, we cry a little bit and then we smile and something amazing happens. But I think it's time you can get a really cohesive team and, and really do something powerful um, online. I love it, Kat. Thanks, thanks again. And can you send me one of those shirts? Like, how do I get one of those those t-shirts? Yeah, aren't they great? <laughs> we'll definitely yeah. send you. Yeah. I have to show you the back, but then I have to stand up and. <laughs> okay, sounds great. I'm gonna pass it over to you, Kat. Thank you again, and we'll yeah. we'll jump into your Q and A once you're done. Great, sounds good. So I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully, you can see it. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yeah, it looks great. It, it looks Perfect. great. Awesome. So um, today I wanted to talk to you about how you can get your startup to be really creative during these uncertain times. Um, I think it's we've got some really amazing opportunities in front of all of us right now. Um, just kind of a little background on me. I'm Kat Donatello. I'm the founder of Austin and Kat. Um, we launched our company or I launched the company in 2016 online. Um, and it's grown amazing. Uh, we have a tremendous team right now. We have 12 employees based in Seattle. Um, but the first two and a half years, I ran this company by myself. I did everything from baking the products to packaging the products to shipping the products to web design to emails. I did everything. Um, but now we have a really robust DTC business um, hosted by Shopify. And we have a really amazing wholesale business um, that I'm going to talk a little bit about because um, I think it's got some great opportunities uh, for everyone there. So a little background on the company. Uh, in 2014, I had a dog named Brady. Uh, he was suffering with a lot of symptoms uh, of getting old. Um, and I knew that there had to be a way I could help him naturally and not use pharmaceuticals. Um, at the same time, I had a young puppy named Austin and he had pretty severe um, anxiety. Um, so like I said, in 2014, I discovered CBD. Uh, CBD is short for cannabidiol. It's kind of all the buzz right now. Everybody's talking about it, but I've really been working with it for about six years. Um, I started making dog treats at my home to help both uh, Brady and Austin. And in a very few short months, I had friends asking for them, uh, neighbors, people I didn't even know coming up to me asking if they could purchase these treats. And at that time, I decided I could make this a real business. Uh, so after some experimentation with recipes, doing some trials with uh, friends via social media. I launched the company in 2016 uh, on Shopify. And then in 2000, 2017, I began selling to uh, local pet stores. And so as Scott mentioned, um, I work with CBD, so I'm not uh, able to advertise on Google or social media. So my customers had to become my billboards and my greatest advocates. And I think what really helped Austin and Kat was the brand is a very authentic brand. I mean, I'm Kat, my dog is Austin, our name's on the product, um, and we're a living brand. Um, and so one of the things I mentioned to Scott when we did the meetup in Seattle was about us sections on your website. So if you have an about 
us section on your website, you should share your why. Why are you doing this? Who are you? Um, how can you help someone solve a problem that they have? And it doesn't matter whether you sell copier paper or you sell dog treats to help dogs dealing with pain and inflammation and anxiety. You're solving some need that a consumer has. Um, so letting them know who you are, that maybe you have that problem first off, it, it, I, it gives your brand an identity and it really helps with that authenticity. And it's one of the first things I look at when I go to websites is I want to know who I'm going to be buying from. Um, and also don't be afraid to consider wholesale relationships. Um, so when I first started Austin and Cat, um, it was just an online business, but I saw that there were stores out there that were also um, selling CBD products and I knew I had a great product. So I started to sell into local retailers. And what that also means is new regions mean new customer exposure. So if you have the opportunity to sell into um, maybe your old, uh, your hometown and it's a pet store or it's, you know, a, like I said, a, a paper copier store, and you can develop a relationship with uh, those retailers, they can help you grow your business. And then that in turn can then drive some sales online. And what we've noticed as a company is the areas where we have the biggest concentration of wholesale customers are also our biggest concentration of our direct to consumer customers. So be open to looking at those wholesale relationships. Also, make sure that you're listening to your customers. And I'm all about innovating, 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 and iterating, 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 and don't be afraid to fail. So when I started um, Austin and Cat in 2016, I had one SKU. Uh, today we have 15 SKUs, and a lot of those were trial and error. We listen to what the customer wants. We'd take small groups of our customers who were purchasing maybe uh, one specific item, and we'd say to them, hey, we're gonna sample out something. Do you guys wanna try this and see if, you're, if you like the product? And if you do, we get great feedback from it. Maybe we can create a new product. Um, do limited runs of SKUs, create bundle packages. Trial, trial, trial. Now's the time to keep trying things. Do A-B testing on all of the, the different opportunities that you might have in front of you. And then cultivate your existing customers. Um, I truly believe, especially in this environment, that nurturing your existing customer base is just as important, if not more important than acquisition right now. So taking care of the people who have come back over and over and finding out what they're needing right now. Um, with Austin and Cat, over 40% of our customers purchase more than once. We have a subscription model. The subscription model accounts for about 40 to 50% of our business every single month. Um, and remember that that first impression is a lasting impression. So I know it's not going to be the case for everyone. You might make mattresses and someone buys a mattress. They don't buy another mattress for 15 years. But if you have a product that can have a shelf life um, with that consumer for a long time where they're going to repeat buying, they need to have a good experience um, when they when they first experience you. So like they said, that first impression is a lasting impression. So get creative when you're thinking about your customer's entire experience. From the minute they land on your website, um, is there a pop-up? Is the pop-up distracting? Is there a call to action on the pop-up? Is your site navigational? Um, is it easy to use? Think about all of those things. Look at it from your customer's perspective. A lot of times we'll go to these websites and they'll be beautifully curated but they're impossible to work. So you wanna make sure that, that your site is very easy to use. So let's talk about how we can get creative today um, in this environment. Um, one of the things that we looked at as a company was we wanted to look at our emails and how they went out. Um, we had a lot of different funnels and a lot of different email strategies, but some of them weren't always going to be appropriate for right now. Um, so you want to check all of your emails that are going out, any of your automations that you have, your welcome series, your post-purchase buying series, all of those things need to right now convey compassion, convey suggestions, and also convey value. Um, phone calls. If you're a new company and you're just launching DTC um, and your consumer base might be really small, there's nothing wrong with picking up the phone and just saying, Hey, how's it going? How are you doing? I noticed you live in 
Alabama and you've just had your stay home order put in place. How are you managing? In our case, we'll check in and see how their dog is doing. A lot of times uh, our customers are coming to us right now and saying, my dog is super excited that I was home uh, now that I'm working from home. But now the dog's like, well, why are you paying attention to me? I've always associated you with fun and you're just staring at your computer. So you got to reach out to your customers. And, and I have no problem with picking up the phone um, and saying hello. Handwritten cards. I heard Scott mention that earlier. What are you doing to convey a relationship with your consumer? We've done handwritten cards from the very beginning of time. Uh, I hand wrote all of them for the first two and a half years. Now our packaging team does that. But we write little special messages on every card. We know the dog's name. We collect that at checkout. So, you know, we can say, hey, Scott and Fluffy, hope you're doing well. Stay healthy, stay put. Um, and it's just that little extra touch point. Um, social media. We're approaching social media very differently right now. We've taken that kind of fun, whimsical approach and, and kind of dialed it down and talked about the need states that people's pets are having right now. We're introducing them to staff and how staff are managing working from home um, and using that kind of uh, messaging. Um, make sure you're using upsell apps via Shopify. You might want to change any of the pop-ups that you have. Um, right now we use a privy pop-up, but we've changed it. Um, to make sure that we're using a pro, an appropriate pop-up right now. Scott highlighted our pop-up earlier um, on, his, on his presentation. But what we did with our Privy pop-up is uh, we A-B tested, we A-B-C tested to see which one had the best um, uh, recognition with a customer, which one communicated with our customer best. And that's the one we landed on and that we're using now. Um, create creative discounts everybody's got a discount right now any website you pull up there's you know we're doing this for covid 19 we're doing you know free shipping uh overnight shipping for free get creative with your discounts make sure that you've got a really good value um we created what are called survival bundles uh we sell different uh products based on the need states of pets um, so we have one of our products deals with anxiety. There's a lot of pets suffering with anxiety right now um, just because they're feeding off of our anxiety. So we created a bundle package that had our number one uh, anxiety product alongside some of our other products. And it's done very, very well. And then also consider offering your customers financial help. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how we did that um, as a company. So what are we doing here at Austin and Cat? Um, we sent two different COVID emails, uh, and I'll go over both of those shortly, because I think we did a really nice job. We got on it very early, uh, second week of March, March 13th, we sent out our first email, um, and then we sent a follow-up email with, with a guide that Scott helped us uh, craft our, our subject line on. Um, we turned off all selling automations uh, and we updated every single one of our email workflows. We dove really deep in them because we didn't want to become this company that was just selling, selling, selling. We wanted to make sure that we were being compassionate and caring and offering our customers help. Um, we use Gorgeous uh, for our customer service and now we're monitoring that seven days a week. We used to only monitor it uh, Monday through Friday, nine to four. Now we're really technically monitoring it 24 seven. We rotate um, through the staff so we know that the staff can remotely answer questions that's arising. And then we set up a how was your service and currently right now um, my staff's getting a five star rating. Their one touch uh, responses are really good. I highly recommend using a, a customer service type of monitoring uh, program like Gorgeous since rather than using just a hello at or help at. Um, phone calls. We turned our entire staff into a phone calling frenzy team. Um, each of our sales team members has been calling all of our retail stores that we deal with, and it's not for selling purposes. It's talking to them about how are they doing, how are they managing. Um, we're very fortunate in the pet industry. We, are, we have been considered essential, but a lot of our stores are closed and only offering curbside. So what that means is they can't talk to their customers about other products that are in their stores. And right now, the main thing that people are coming into a pet store to buy is dog food or cat food. Um, so just checking in with those retailers and making sure that they're doing okay and have everything that they need and know that they have our support. Um, beginning this week, we're calling all of our direct-to-consumer customers. Now, 
obviously that's not gonna be feasible for, for a lot of you, but if you were to take your top 100 customers and take five minutes and call them, everybody's home right now. And for the most part, you've got their phone numbers. Um, if you can't do phone calls, Personal emails mean the world to people right now. In addition, handwritten notes and packages like we talked about, but we're also sending out handwritten postcards to all of our um, customers, just saying, hi, how you doing? We're here if you need us. Um, additionally, think about your social media like we talked about. Be honest, be transparent. Sharing your founder story right now is really cool. And if you think about your founder story and how your founder story is going to even change over the next three, six, 12 months, I think you've got some really good opportunities to really become that authentic uh, company. Introduce your team. Uh, right now we're doing that on our social media. Um, and we're also doing live Q and A. So we've partnered with a number of our retail stores um, and then we'll do a Q and A with them uh, so they can uh, help their customers. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we changed the privy pop-ups to include a discount and then we created this survival guide. So the first mail that we sent out um, was a lot like what most uh, retailers and a lot of businesses did send out. Um, we sent it out, like I said, March 13th, very early on. But the goal was to acknowledge there was a change in times. Uh, we wanted to alert uh, our customers that we were changing our shipment policies, our procedures, and how we were going to protect our staff. We also wanted to acknowledge that many people would be facing economic hardships, and we wanted to offer help, and we also wanted to offer a solution. Um, and what we did was we allowed our customers to reach out to us and let us know if they were having financial difficulties, and we've either given them very, very deep discounts, or in some cases, we've even sent uh, product at no charge. We also explained who we're receiving guidance from. So for us, we're a Washington-based company and based in Seattle. So we're looking to guidance from the state of Washington, the CDC, and then also the American Veterinary Association. So we wanted to let our consumers know that. Um, and then we also ended the note with a, a note of optimism and encouragement and let everybody know that we're all in this together. Uh, then on March 28th, we sent um, an email to all our subscribers and all of our email customers um, and all, I'm sorry, all of our Shopify customers. And this was um, to create this uh, guide. We created a um, COVID guide on how to keep both owners and their four-legged friends healthy and sane through this time. Um, so what we did was we wanted to make sure that we had an appropriate subject. So we ABC tested uh, with 20% of our um, of our customer base, sent about 600 emails to determine which of our subject lines would resonate best with our um, our base. And then the next day, we sent out the 7.2 thousand went to the winning campaign, and the winning campaign was how to support each other through uncertain times. We did two things in the email. We had call to actions. We wanted customers to read this guide and we wanted them to forward the guide on. And then the other action was to purchase one of our survival kits, which was that product bundle that I had talked about, which was a deep discount. And then we also partnered with another um, uh, brand, another uh, direct to consumer brand to get a gift from them. And we placed those gifts inside um, all of those packages. And this is just kind of a, a quick glance of uh, what the guide looked like. Um, we wanted to introduce the guide and why we were doing it. We wanted to create that call to action on the first page, and we wanted to provide valuable help. So a lot of the people were very new uh, to working from home, so we wanted to give some tips from working from home. I had been working from home for over 20 years, so I thought I had some, some pretty good ideas on, on how to maintain some sanity during that time frame. And then we wanted to talk to them about how to stay safe in Corona world. And um, the gentleman that spoke before me was, and Scott were both talking about getting out and exercise and making sure that you can take care of yourself mentally and physically. Um, being active, being productive, checking in with family and friends, turning off the news, like Scott said. But we wanted to be honest, authentic, and we wanted to provide valuable help and links. So we kind of put in this guide um, things that we like to do as a company, things that I was doing, things that some of my staff were doing, some of the news sources that we were looking to. And then we partnered with um, experts in our industry. So it, this wasn't all about selling our product, but this was about creating relationships. 
So we partnered with um, the Barking Meter out of New York City, which is one of the premier dog walking companies um, in the city, and how to social distance with your dogs and still keep your dog active, um, providing structure, routine. Um, and then we wanted to introduce the team. We felt it was really important for, um, you know, everyone's working from home, so why not see who some of our staff was um, that would also be working from home. And then we wanted to share our knowledge. So we are very fortunate. We have um, a chief science officer on staff at Austin and Cat. So he was able to provide some really helpful and knowledgeable tips on uh, COVID uh, and pets. And then we wanted to be at the end of the newsletter, we wanted to wrap it up with being very thankful um, and create another call to action. So join in our Instagram family. Um, so that's kind of where uh, I'm at, and I just hope everyone can stay healthy and be well, stay home, and know that we've got this. We're all in this together, and I'm really um, looking forward to, to any, answering any questions that you might have. All right. All right, Kat, thank you so much. That was phenomenal, giving us an overview of everything you've done. It sounds like, like every conversation I've had with you, you guys jumped on this all immediately and got in front of it instead of just sitting in the dark wondering what to do. Um, we have a bunch of questions here, so let me get started. The first one is a pretty simple one. Some of them are longer, some of them are short. But the first one is from Greg K. He says, Kat, who do you use as a payment processor? Who is the simplest to set up with? <laughs> it's CBD. Um, that is a, that's a webinar in itself. So if he <laughs> wants to send me an email directly, I'm happy to chat with him. Yeah, I, I, I recommend doing that, Greg. You can hop into the Q&A or the chat and you can choose to speak to the panelists. Tag Kat and she'll get back to you. The, the next question is from Andrew. That's all I have is Andrew. He says, how do you go about developing wholesale relationships? We've had some stores, resellers reach out to us, but how do we go about developing that channel as far as vendor forms, taking payments and afterwards business development cold call? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, we had, when I was first starting to deal with wholesale customers, I had no idea what a margin was. Like, so my very first wholesale experience was with a pet store here in Seattle called All the Best Pet Care, and they have 17 stores. That was the first store I sold into. And my first meeting was all about margins. And I was like, oh, I'm in a lot of trouble. So find a mentor that can help you walk through this. I'm happy to, again, if you want to send me some questions offline, I'm happy to answer it. it you want to have all your ducks in a row. Let's just say that. So you get paid <laughs> and you set up things appropriately. Yeah. It's, it's, if, if you want to send Kat an email, can you remind us what your email address is in case yeah. anyone wants to reach out? Absolutely. My email is Kat with a K uh, at austinandcat.com all spelled out. I feel like you're going to get some more payment processing questions because our next question is from Matt McKinnon. He says, Kat, I'm launching a CBD skincare line. Who do you suggest for payment processors that work with the recurring billings for subscriptions? And he also said, also, do you run giveaways for social growth collabs with influencers and brands? Concerned that will, uh, are you concerned that that will cannibalize sales and keep people from converting as they wait for the winner to be announced? Um, you know, we do collaborate. We have what are called pupfluencers. It's kind of a term that we made up. Um, there are kind of our brand ambassadors that we work with, um, and we do a limited amount of giveaways on that. Um, we, I feel like we have a really good product and it's really unique. Um, and I'm, I'm not about giving away everything, but I, I, you know, we do do some partnerships like that with, with, I'll just kind of broadly answer the CBD question. So, uh, we're a Shopify plus merchant. We're a pre-approved CBD Shopify plus merchant with Shopify. Um, there's a lot of hoops to jump through when, in, when it comes to credit card processing, um, do your due diligence. I'm not going to have all the answers, but there's a lot of really good material out there. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I feel like you'd be a good resource for a lot of people right now. Everyone, I hope I'm not everyone's going to bombard your inbox here. <laughs> but, and yeah. I have one more for my, you. My inbox is really crazy right now, just because we're dealing with, we've got 800 retail stores that we're dealing with right now. So trying to take care of everybody is, is that's, hard. That's, yeah. Maybe, maybe there's maybe, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I was going to be cautious about that, but since you put the offer out, might as well get your email address out there. Maybe you can get some help. Maybe we can help you respond to emails. <laughs> All right. The next question is from Jesper, and this is the last one. It says, question for Kat Donatello. Do you see any difference in your client's behavior when it comes to the amount of clients using their mobile devices versus desktop? 
We're about 50-50, so that's a really good question. So make sure that your website works well on mobile. So that we're running into, we've just had done a website redesign in November and we're going back to the drawing board because our website is not as friendly on mobile as it is on desktop. So with, a, with consumers, um, on a normal, in a normal world, I think we would be purchasing on our phones a lot more than we are probably right now. I know I'm doing more of my online purchasing uh, on my desktop than I had previously been doing on my phone. But now's a really good time to like t take a step back and be the consumer and look at your own website. It, you know, and do it on the phone and you, you might go, oh gosh, what, whoa, whoa. <laughs> which is what I did. <laughs> Okay, I lied. There's one, one last one from Mia uh, Shuck. She's in Vancouver Island, and I've met Mia before, and, and they have a, a shop. I'm reading stores. her question here. No, <laughs> Mia. Unfortunately, we don't sell CBD pet treats in Canada yet. Not yet. It's coming. It says, it says there's a lot more rules about CBD in Canada. I feel like maybe more lenient rules, though. Yeah. Potentially. All right. Okay, Kat, thank you so much. I know how busy you are, and that presentation was phenomenal. I know that everybody that asked questions that you answered would appreciate that as well. Thank you so much. It was great seeing you. And Michael, thank you. Yours was awesome too.